WFT's Megan Gannon visited precincts in Alachua County today to see what's driving voters. Megan? Ladies, the common thread today was thanks for the great weather and the short ballot. This was a lot easier process than two years ago. The rally will happen here before the school board meeting tonight in hopes that the school board members will hear the concerns of teachers before the meeting that is set for next week. And WFT's Megan Gannon joins us now with a look at what exactly that means. Yes, ladies, thank you. Um, Giving Tuesday sparked fire on social media and it's now been growing stronger. And I know it's just really frightening to see how similar the candy and the packaging really is. Absolutely, and just a message for parents to always be cautious of what your kids do come home with from the neighbors. Thank you, Megan. Now, as you can see behind me, this is just one of the 63 voting precincts here in Alachua County, as you can see, lined by these campaign signs right here. Now, voters have said that casting their ballot has taken a little less than 10 minutes today. So far, we've had one district threaten to opt out of state testing, and we've seen a revolt in Alachua County over computerized testing for kindergartners. In Marion County, teachers are rallying this evening along much the same lines. One quote I noticed on the flyer says it all. It says, together, we can put an end to this testing obsession. The teachers union in Marion County is rallying to have their voices heard about student testing. The union is embracing a grassroots movement to reduce state mandated testing. Let's see how much of that is being devoted to test prep, to testing, to follow up, you know, and, and I think you're going to find out that it's taking away a lot of instructional time that the teachers could be using uh, to really uh, assist the kids that need that help. There is currently no provision for Florida districts to opt out of testing or choose alternative ways to show a child's proficiency. But the local school board will take up the issue at a work session next week. We're just asking for the state to give parents an opt out opportunity or an opportunity to uh, delay the test until they adequately vet what they're asking us to test. The teachers union rallied educators to speak on the issue at this evening's board meeting since teachers do not have time to attend morning work sessions. The rally will happen here before the school board meeting tonight in hopes that the school board members will hear the concerns of teachers before the meeting that is set for next week. The teachers union is giving buttons to all the teachers to show students they are more than just a test score. Now, if you're like myself and you believe that kindergartners should be blowing bubbles instead of filling them in, that's the whole point of this rally. Now that work session is set for 9 a.m. on October 23rd, the board will discuss what amounts to excessive testing and the thorny issue of what happens if a district doesn't want to go along with every single test the state expects to be administered. Megan Gannon, WUFT News. And WFT's Megan Gannon joins us now with a look at what exactly that means. Yes, ladies, thank you. Um, Giving Tuesday sparked fire on social media and it's now been growing stronger. During the holiday season, the famous phrase, it's better to give than receive is something we hear all the time. And now there is a day devoted to doing exactly that. There is a movement that allows you to give back to an organization that means most to you. Giving Tuesday started just two years ago and falls on the Tuesday following Cyber Monday. This movement took social media by storm, reaching more than 2 billion Twitter followers and even sparking the hashtag GivingTuesday. Some nonprofits have reaped the benefits of this call to action. Giving Tuesday and social media just really broadens our reach and like spreads the word because we're kind of a small organization here at UF and not a lot of people know what we're about. So Giving Tuesday is just another platform for us to use to get our word out. Of course, you're not just reaching those people who have decided to follow, your, follow you. You're reaching the people that then they are friends with. So it creates a, a huge global network of contacts that we can reach you know, fairly cheaply and effectively to get the word out. I think social media is kind of the biggest driving factor for a campaign like Giving Tuesday and just knowing about nonprofits. I think it's a lot more accessible. You know, people may not stumble on your website as often as they will see your Facebook page. 20,000 nonprofit organizations have partnered with the Giving Tuesday website, which is a significant increase from the original 2,500 when the idea started in 2012. 
with the craziness of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday is a way to remember that this is the season of giving. Remembering that it is also a time to help those who need it and help those who are less fortunate. And so finding a charity that, um, you know, that you strike a chord with, that you agree with and want to support. And but I think Giving Tuesday is a great reminder that this season is about more than just gifts and presents to us. It's also about making a difference and making the world a better place. And Giving Tuesday gives people a, a way to do that. For more information, you can go to the Giving Tuesday website at givingtuesday.org. WFT's Megan Gannon visited precincts in Alachua County today to see what's driving voters. Megan? Ladies, the common thread today was thanks for the great weather and the short ballot. This was a lot easier process than two years ago. But there are a variety of reasons people wanted to make sure to vote in this midterm, from the governor's race to the amendment on medical marijuana, and others see it as both a duty and a privilege. Today was the final chance to convince voters before they cast their ballots. Campaign signs line the sidewalks leading up to the precincts in Alachua County. More than 36,000 votes were cast in Alachua County before today, and another 40 or 50,000 people will vote in person today. A number of races are driving people to the polls. Uh, I try to vote every time I have the opportunity, but um, the things that really got me uh, interested in the race were mostly the amendments. Just in general, as far as um, basically the governor um, election, it's just really important. A lot of changes that need to be made, um, a lot of things in the world today that um, need to be done. And I feel like this that's what brought me out. I want to see change. I just retired from the military, and I think it's my duty to vote. Um, I feel if you don't vote, you can't complain, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent. I think it's your obligation as an American citizen to vote. Now, as you can see behind me, this is just one of the 63 voting precincts here in Alachua County, as you can see, lined by these campaign signs right here. Now, voters have said that casting their ballot has taken a little less than 10 minutes today. Well, I just think it's an absolute duty to vote. Um, and it doesn't matter what the races are. You've got to get out there and do it. I'd like to vote on election day. I think it's been a tradition that people will be in coming voting on election day. They got the early voting now, which I don't care for it. I just come vote on election day. The polls close at 7 p.m. local time statewide, so Alachua County will start turning around results soon afterward. The Florida Division of Elections will do the same, but it will not begin posting until 8 o'clock our time when the polls close at 7 central time in the western panhandle.